away from the homes and uh, spend your time here uh, trying to make something out of life. And uh, I'm sure that all of you will do it uh, in a great fashion, but there will be some who will do it better than others. So my wish here, uh, through whatever ideas I'm going to share with you, is that you, all of you, use the spark that is within you to the best of your potential, right? And uh, Rohit talked about Isaac Isomov, and uh, he is an amazing person. He has wrote 400 books in his lifetime. And uh, for a person to write in one book or two books in a lifetime is a great deal. But he has written 400 books. So if you ponder over it, how did he manage to do it? He utilized his time well. And if you just think from the macro perspective, all of us, if uh, we get to live around 100 years, we have around uh, 5,000 weekends of our lives, right? So our, each one of us, if we tend, if we live 100 years, we we'll live up to around 500, 5,000 weekends. And if you look at our life, weekend by weekend, right? In your campus, you are here for say four years, engineering students, BBA students are for three years. So you'll be spending out of those 5,000 weekends, already you have spent around uh, 1,000 weekends, right? 4,000 weekends are left. And within three or four years, you will spend uh, how many? Oh, good calculation. So 200 weekends you will spend here. So the onus is on you that you spend all these uh, weekends conscientiously, right? Life is not about being serious, it is about being sincere. Like you need not be uh, all the time into your computer and writing all the time and studying all the time, but you've got to be sincere about whatever you're doing. Even if you are using Facebook, use it sincerely, not seriously, right? So if you want to know more about this particular concept, how to use Facebook seriously, sincerely, not seriously, so you can, you can probably uh, talk to me offline. But at this point in time, about time, I'll share three tips with you. Uh, there's one gentleman, his name is David Allen. He's written a book called uh, GTD, Getting His Done, a great book. You must all read that, but I am not going to talk about that. I'll give you three tips, probably, which you can just go out and apply those in your life, starting from today or tomorrow. The first one is using 4x4 in your life. I've been using this for um, around four years now, and the results have been uh, quite surprising for me as well. 4x4 four four is you spend four hours every day, four days of a week, on something which is essential. And uh, by essential, I mean uh, not doing emails or Facebook or surfing web for your various projects. It is uh, probably doing some new research, writing some good books in your library. Uh, you all may have different varied interests, like Rohit has interest in Pulp Fiction till now. And uh, there are other people who like reading science fiction. There will be uh, girls who like to read Sophie Kinsella. So choice is yours, but spend your time wisely. And better spend these four hours at the start of the day. Like, uh, you've got to be adventurous to try it. If your classes are starting, say, 9, if you can get up at 4 and uh, spend those four hours in the morning itself, that'll be great. If that's not possible, then spend two hours in the morning and two hours at the end of the day doing essential work. Work which will take you closer to dreams. I'm sure all of you, us, all of you have uh, some dreams, right? Somebody wants to work, go work for Google. Somebody wants to start his own enterprise. People who have uh, created this EDC here and uh, who are setting up this TEDx uh, SPSU. So there are different kind of varied interests within uh, all of you, right? So whatever dream is, work towards the dreams within those four hours. And as the day progresses, as the week progresses, you will see tremendous difference. And once you achieve a part of your goals, you will be confident enough to achieve more. Second important thing is, uh, we all have had projects in life, in school, at work. Those of uh, us who are, who are working, you will also go out and work in industry, probably for your own enterprise or for somebody else's, right? So you'll have projects to deliver, you'll have timelines, deadlines. So the, here also, your professors or teachers will give you projects. And uh, many of you will uh, be, find yourself cutting and pasting from Google, right? Nothing bad about it, but there's a better way of doing it. The concept is called hurry and wait. The day you find a project given to you by a teacher, just finish the project that very day. Don't aim for 100%, aim for 80%, 70%. And if the deadline is say 7 uh, days from the day it is given to you, then finish 80% on the day it is given to you, at that very night or the evening. And then sleep over it for a couple of days. And then work on it again. At 
close to deadline, probably one day behind deadline, or on the day of deadline if it is uh, that way work, working for you. Right? So time is, uh, if you take care of uh, these two things, 4x4 four four and hurry and wait, so probably you'll have less stress in life, in college at least, and you'll be able to uh, deliver more projects uh, before timeline. Second is, uh, this is about uh, utilizing time then. Second project, uh, second concept related to this is productivity. How to be more productive, right? So the first step I'm going to share with you is quite counterintuitive, right? So people who want to be productive, they, they see themselves as workaholics, right? People who sleep less and work more. Uh, type A people. So the counterintuitive point here is you need not be uh, a workaholic to be productive in life. First tip is sleep more than you're sleeping today. Right? If you're sleeping for five hours, go sleep for six hours. If you're sleeping for six, sleep for seven. I'll go to the extent of saying if you're sleeping eight, sleep for nine. Right? I have a friend from Canada, her name is Jessa Gamble. Her book comes out uh, in April uh, by Penguin uh, UK. So the book is about, the book is titled The Sarista and the Midnight. Right? She has researched, uh, she has spent around 10 years of her life researching about sleep. And uh, she says that every human being should sleep uh, like with this clock, the sun. As the sun goes down, you should uh, like go into light uh, activities and sleep as uh, like by the uh, by the sunlight. In summers, you may sleep less. Winter, sleep more. But not to make it too complex for you, sleep more as much as you can. Right? Don't go for 10 hours, 11 hours, but 9 hours is okay if you sleep that much. Because if you don't sleep in your bed, right? Either you sleep in class or you sleep at work. So no point. And when you have slept enough, then you'll be able to focus better. And it will also show, show in your relationship, right? Like Chetan Bhagat was talking to a similar audience and he uh, quoted one example. So I'll share that example with you. Like uh, there are so many books which say, okay, life is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And But he said that life is a race when you have a spoon in your mouth and uh, a coin in that particular spoon. And even if you're running and you have spoon in your mouth once you reach the finish line, but that coin drops, so you're not a winner. You are a winner when you take the spoon with the coin across the finish line. Because if you have got a promotion one day, or if you probably uh, get to Google and your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up the same day, so it's like uh, going across the cross line without that coin in the spoon, right? No point. So when you sleep well, you'll not be cranky also, and you'll be able to like see through your relationship better, right? So there's somebody who can uh, use this advice. Here. So probably many of them. So I'm not asking you to raise hands. So this is one, and then another thing, very simple, uh, very commonsensical. Not all of us uh, do it. I've uh, been paid to this particular thing for long. I was somebody who was always uh, on the machine laptop and probably two laptops, three screens at one go. On one screen Twitter, other screen Facebook, other screen something else, some new technology which is coming, right? But I, uh, starting from 21st November 2010, I made it a point that I'll not uh, be connected whatsoever uh, way, right? I'll be off the web before midday. And uh, I'm working on my first book right now. And uh, I was able to do a lot uh, for that particular book and uh, many other things. The point is not me, the point is about you. If you get away from Facebook or from uh, email or from whatever social network you use, right? For a while you're off your day, then you'll be able to focus on what is important in your life. And people who are working, they know that uh, in their outlook, they'll always uh, press send mail, send mail, send mail. So no point. Uh, if. There's a mail if it is urgent, so somebody can call you also. So just take your email once a day probably. Don't do it more than that. Because email is not your life. Before email came into our lives, right? Isaac Isobo was there, and there were so many great people who have done great things before email was there, right? So email is not something that will catapult you into some different category of uh, or being a superhuman. So this that email at least for uh, early part of a day. And it made a it will make a great difference to your lives. Right? And third uh, idea I have to share with you is about emotions. Everything is related, but okay, I am talking about it separately. When you are in campus, uh, most of you are away from your homes, right? So emotions are uh, the bank of emotions, the positive emotions, probably uh, is slightly shallow. 
and there's a dry well which students will try to fill in many ways. Probably at times through friendship and some of them uh, like really good bonds, some of them not so uh, great bonds. So just see, okay, just take care of emotions. Find the right kind of people who you can bond with and um, you are all in co-ed education, right? There will be girls and boys. So it is natural uh, to be attracted to each other at this age. So but don't go after, if there is a lady, don't go after a boy even if he says no or he's not interested in you. Same for uh, boys, right? So don't go after anybody if uh, he or she is not interested in you. Like in life also, when you go to work, there is a concept about it. It is called prospect. If the pros prospect somebody, right? Ask somebody if you are, are you interested in being a friend with me? It may be a boy boy also, right? It's not about girls. Other response can be no. There cannot be any other response, right? If the person says yes, then uh, wouldn't find, right? You must be happy about it. If the person says no, move on and ask the other person. Don't keep banging on that door which is close to you. No point. And uh, I don't know about you. But when we were in school a couple of years back in a college like this, so we uh, didn't used to uh, like take a bath every day. <laughs> Somebody go at, uh, to the extent of uh, going seven days without it taking baths, right? <laughs> so I'm sure in Udaipur this is not a big challenge for you. So take a bath every day. It works a great deal for emotions, right? It will keep you positive, sane in your right senses. And you'll be able to focus on the things. And uh, I'm talking about those days when the gel was not uh, so uh, popular, right? Today you have gel so you can uh, do things. So take a bath every day and uh, all of you, if you can exercise of any sort, somebody is there for uh, yoga, I call it yoga, people call it yoga, you can do that. You can do push-ups if you want to bulk up and you can do sorts of things, right? You can go for a uh, light evening stroll, but do something. It will also keep you safe. And uh, Fourth idea, which uh, is relevant to all of you, but not apparently. I am somebody who is uh, like uh, born thinking about startups, uh, being enterprising and doing enterprises, right? And uh, this EDC, there are lots of people who want to build their own things. And uh, yesterday we were talking uh, casually, so people asked me, okay, uh, when should we build our startup? After BTech, should we do MTech? Should we do uh, get into a job? What should we do? What should we do, right? So I'd say whether you want to get into a job or you want to start your own enterprise, do create a startup here. Because startup is not only about uh, people who want to become entrepreneurs uh, after getting out of campus. Say, uh, I'm just giving an example. If, say if you want to work for Google or Facebook, uh, like uh, company of the day, so they'll not uh, look at your resume or your LinkedIn profile, right? They'll look at the kind of projects you've done. If uh, you want to work in Java, Ajax, uh, these kind of technology, they'll see, okay, how have you used this technology? Just writing on a resume that, okay, you know, Java, Ajax, or probably uh, these new technologies, or some new CMS which is coming, right? It'll not uh, come the task for you. If you'll have a live project, probably of your own or with a team, then uh, you'll be able to show companies that uh, you know the stuff. And you never know, I am sure that uh, not everyone here will be, uh, will become Mark Zuckerberg, the person who started Facebook. But uh, some of you will create enterprises which will go to uh, 50 crores, 100 crores, maybe 1000 crores also. So that is possible and within the reach of everybody, right? And gone are days when, uh, there are so many people who uh, tell me when I go to uh, like posties like this, they say, okay, we don't have money, financial uh, constraint is a big constraint for us. So in 21st century, you don't need money uh, to build an enterprise. You need ideas, and this is the place. Um, not all of uh, all of uh, you all will be friends with each other, right? But there'll be some close friends here. On campus, you make some of your uh, really close friends. And these are these will be friends for life. So these are the people you can trust. And for building an uh, enterprise, you need people who you can trust with your time, money, your ambitions also. So find somebody who we share common goals with, and uh, build some good project of your own. So whether it's a job or whether you want to do a startup, it will help you like every point in your life. And um, there is one more uh, point. Uh, it is about uh, motivation, right? People uh, seek motivation from uh, gatherings like this. And uh, through books also, people watch video for getting motivated. So motivation is one thing. What is important is what you do with motivation. 
like when I'm talking to you, some of you will be motivated to do something out of this, uh, these ideas that I'm discussing with you. But what is more important is what you do with these ideas that I'm sharing with you, right? So motivation gets you started, but discipline is something which keeps you there, right? So it is not that motivation is not important. Like bathing is important every day. Similarly, motivation is also important. Important. So you keep motivating yourself every day. Read uh, good books. There are so many of them. And uh, TED.com is there. There are variety of ideas from uh, like any field you look at. There, there are interesting videos from people who are known for their thoughts. Read books. And but stay disciplined also. If you uh, want to do something, then devote an hour of a day or two hours of a day to it. And uh, going back to productivity, don't try to do so many things, right? When I was a kid, I wanted to be a model, I wanted to be a professional speaker, I wanted to start my own enterprise, and I wanted to do so many things. And I tried doing that, but all at the same time. So that was a challenge. And later on, uh, as I grew up slightly, so I learned that uh, you should do things one by one. So whatever you plan to do, whatever project you want to do, focus on that and do one or two things at a time. Don't try to do 50 things at one go, right? So that's my message and uh, finally I'll say, um, before uh, people start believing in you, right, you've got to believe in yourself first. So that will be my message for the day. Thank you very much.